Hello, so today we're heading to a couple of different locations, hopefully capture a few landscape photos. Along the way, I thought I would share some of my tried and tested outdoor clothing, because I think it plays such an important role for enjoying the great outdoors. And I often get asked about what I'm wearing when I'm out and about. So with the holiday season fast approaching, I thought it would be great to run through everything I wear when I'm out in the field on these photography adventures. Now, everything I'm going to mention ticks several boxes. It's lightweight, durable, and offers very good value for money. So let's get straight into the footwear. Oh, and by the way, I'm gonna be filming some of this week's video with a brand new camera, which I'll also talk about later on in the video as well. So let's get cracking. So my boots are the Berghorse Gore-Tex Superlight 2, I think they're called. The fully waterproof leather Gore-Tex boot. Highly recommend them, I've had them for about six years now. And these ones are finally coming to the end of their life. But wow, six years for a pair of boots when you wear them almost on a daily basis is pretty impressive. And my wife is buying me a new pair for Christmas, which is super good. So I'll have some new boots in the new year. If I get another six years out of them, I'll be happy. I think the price on these is really good as well for a real solid pair of hiking boots. So I highly recommend the Berghorse Super Light 2s. Now I'm a massive fan of merino wool. I think it's a fantastic material and it's great for a base layer because it helps to insulate, but it also helps to wick moisture away from the body, which is incredibly important when you're tackling staircases like those and you start to get out of breath, especially when you've got your camera gear on your back. So yeah, a good base layer is incredibly important. I've got a few that I use. I've got one by Heli Hansen, one by Smart Wool, which are a blend of merino and polyester, I believe. And this is brand new, this one from Decathlon. It's quite cheap, it was only 40 pounds. And I think this one's 100% merino. So yeah, it'd be interesting to see how this one fares up. Like I say, I can't really recommend this one just yet because I've only just bought it, but yeah. The other two have stood the test of time and have worked really well. Whew. I can hear the sound of the waterfall. Sounds like it's going to be incredibly noisy down there. So yeah, can't wait to get down there to take a look. So next up we have the all important mid layer, which is going to keep you warm. And also it needs to be breathable as well. And this is the Rab Nexus Midweight. And it's a, a fleecy material but it allows the skin to breathe as well, which is great when you're working hard. I've always got this on. If you watch the channel, you've probably seen me wearing nothing but this. I've got, actually got two of these, and this one's probably had its day now, it needs replacing. And I'm gonna buy another one because they're absolutely brilliant. I can highly recommend them. I love the way they uh, zip up around the neck. The chest pocket's great as well for stashing stuff like microphones in when you, when you don't need them. So yeah, highly recommend this. Absolutely brilliant. I could just see the waterfall now. Wow, this is stunning. So I've just abandoned trying to photograph the waterfall. Absolutely chucking it down and the wind's coming straight from the waterfall towards the camera everything is absolutely soaked there's no way you could take a photo there the second you expose the lens to uh, the elements it just gets completely soaked so i think we might go a bit further downstream see if we can find something different just getting this briefly dried off might be a good time to talk about waterproofs you never know when the heavens are going to open on you, do you? Wow, that was intense. I'm not too disheartened about abandoning the waterfall there. It's a good opportunity for me to have a little look further downstream and maybe come back to it later. Seems we have eased off a little bit now as well. But it's probably a good time to talk about waterproofs. Now, these waterproofs never leave my bag, which is super important. They're always there should I need them. Now, this jacket here I've got is uh, pretty much brand new. But I have owned this jacket in the past, about four or five years ago, and it was the best waterproof jacket I'd ever owned. Unfortunately, I ripped it on barbed wire and decided to replace it with a different brand, you know, try a few different brands, and nothing has come close to it, to be honest. So this time round, I've decided to reinvest and go for another Marmot Minimalist. 
yes, I highly recommend this jacket. It's Gore-Tex, super waterproof, very breathable, and yes, just an all-round good hiking and backpacking jacket. Now on the bottom half, the trousers are the Rab Pertex Shield waterproof trousers, which again, I highly recommend. I've had these for three years now, I think, maybe four. And yeah, they haven't let me down. They're very, very light, which is great. And you don't really feel like you've got them on, which is always a good thing. I just leave these in the bottom of my pack and they're always there for me, should we get a torrential downpour such as that. But yeah, whoa, this place is absolutely beautiful. Incredible. Oh, I'm out of breath as well. Right, let's get on up the trail, see if we can find something else. And maybe I need to take off my mid layer because I'm starting to sweat. So, it's been a particularly challenging couple of hours. I've walked about a mile and a half downstream looking for a composition, searching amongst the trees and down by the falls. Couldn't really see anything worth shooting. So I've come back to my original composition, or original ideas by the waterfall here to see if I could get something to work. Now, it has been torrential rain, <laughs> absolutely torrential. The waterproofs are holding up well, but uh, yeah, trying to find a composition here when the water's just pouring off these falls is very, very difficult. The second you move the lens cloth from the front of the lens, your lens is soaking wet. So I've had to retreat back quite far actually to be able to take a shot here. The issue with it here is there's a couple of trees that go straight across the river here, which kind of block the view into the image. So ideally I would have liked to have gone the other side of those logs and got down low. I think I could have made quite a nice dramatic shot. But as you can probably see, the spray is just coming through the through this area here, it's just rapid. The wind's coming straight off the falls. However, I'm gonna take this shot, which, you know, I'm not that keen on, but I'm gonna take it anyway, you never know. The light was quite nice. Maybe when I get home, I'll feel a little bit differently when I'm dry. Good morning and welcome to day two of this week's adventure. I'm going to get straight into it again talking about the gear and one of my favourite pieces of outdoor clothing that I have, which is this, the Rab Alpine Microlite Down Jacket. And I love it because it packs down to such a small size and it weighs hardly anything, which is great, which is why it's always in my pack, apart from obviously those hot summer months. And it's absolutely brilliant. This is five years old now and it's as good as the day that I bought it. Let's put it on. So I absolutely love this jacket. It's uh, been a mainstay in my kit. I wouldn't be without it, honestly. It's absolutely brilliant. It's got a Pertex shield, which means it's windproof as well, which is always good when you're out and about, but it's not waterproof. So you really need a waterproof shell if you're gonna wear a down jacket. As soon as down gets saturated, it's useless basically. So it does have a fill power of 700. If that means anything to you, it doesn't mean anything to me at all. But all I can tell you is in the climate that I tend to be out in, it's perfect. I think if you are like into serious sort of uh, mountain hiking in icy cold conditions, you probably want something a bit warmer, but for the UK, it's absolutely brilliant. Anyway, onwards, see if we can find a composition this morning. I'm gonna have to take this jacket off because it's too hot. So having pre-visualized the shot I want to get, this branch here is quite close to the camera, so I'm having to use an aperture of f10. Now I want to try and freeze any motion in this shot as well, so that's kind of what I'm thinking to start with. Sort of about the branches leading the eye down to the stream at the bottom. The stream's not really a prominent part of the image. I think it leads the eye down to this colorful beech sapling here, which is probably a better uh, viewpoint for the eye to be drawn to. But I don't know whether I'm going to use a polarizer or not, but I'm thinking it might saturate the scene. So that's what I'm doing. 
Yeah, it does have quite a good effect actually. Sometimes the polarizer doesn't have a huge effect if the light's coming straight towards you, but yeah, we definitely get a bit more of a saturated color, less reflections in the foliage. Obviously the downside to that means I've got to raise my ISO because this blocks about a stop of light, or something like that. At the minute I'm half a second. Actually, there's no wind right now. So I'm going to focus on the trunk and that gets this nearest branch sharp or sharp enough anyway. I'm going to grab this image now. So F10, half a second. I haven't got a problem with the wind. That gets nice, everything nice and sharp. The polarizer is on, two second timer. It's all about the early signs of autumn. So the camera that I've been using to film some of the walking parts during this video is the new DJI Osmo Action 4, which uh, I picked up a week or so ago. And uh, yeah, just basically been testing it out to see if it'd be you know, feasible to use it for some of the kind of walking, talking shots. Sometimes you don't get a huge amount of time to set things up and you know, you just want to quickly grab a camera and not worry about settings, just turn it on and record, especially if maybe there's some amazing light happening or something like that. Or if it's raining as well, obviously it's fully waterproof, which is great. So it's one of those cameras that you can just quickly grab, press record, automatically comes on, starts recording. As soon as you press record again, it turns off. As well, these DJI microphones integrate with this. The receiver plugs straight into the USB-C port as well, which, which is really cool. And I think the stabilization on this is pretty impressive. And also the low light performance is quite good for an action camera. So yeah, I'm gonna be playing around with the settings and seeing what I can get, you know, the best I can get out of this camera over the next few weeks and see whether it can do a job on the channel. I think it will, it's definitely got its place anyway. And uh, maybe if I'm doing longer hikes, it's quite nice because it's obviously lightweight too. So yeah, the DJI Action 4. So be sure to check out the links in the video description if you fancy taking a look at any of the gear that I've talked about today. The video up here will take you to a video all about wide angle photography, which is well worth a look. And if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a like because that really does help me out. And why not consider subscribing for more weekly content like this? Take care and I hope to see you all next week.